This tutorial I'm going to talk to you about economic systems. In particular, what are the essential questions that, that are asked, the features, the different types of economic systems, and the need for government intervention. So what are the main features of economic systems? First of all, ownership. Who has control of all the resources, namely capital, labour, enterprise and raw materials? And also, who makes those decisions? Who makes the decisions to put all those, the, those resources into production to make goods and services for consumers and, and everybody else? When we look at the economic systems, there's two extremes. One on the right, this is from the political perspective if you like, we've got p pure market economies or capitalist economies. On the other extreme, you've got on the left hand side, you've got socialism or centrally planned economies where all the decisions and all the resources are owned by the state or namely the government. What sort of options have we got? There's three major forms of ownership for economies. The first one, on the one extreme we've got capitalist economies where all resources are privately owned. There's nothing owned by the state or the government at all. In the middle, the mixed market economies where both the private sector and the public sector owns, owns resources and the, and the enterprises, the businesses that go together. In another extreme, you've got everything owned by the government. It doesn't matter which economy we're talking about, they all have to answer four basic questions. The first one is what to produce and how many? What type of goods and services and how much should be produced in order to best satisfy the needs and wants of consumers to and raise living standards. The next question is how. This is for the producers to work out. Having decided what to produce and how much they should then produce, how should production be organised? What production methods should be used to combine the labour, capital and natural resources? The answer depends on the relative scarcity or cost of each one of the resources. The next question is for whom these goods and services should be produced for. How should the goods and services be shared and distributed amongst individuals? Should the income cake be shared equally or should it be divided based on need or based on effort? There are three options for countries making economic decisions. Firstly, the pure market or capitalist system. Here the free market or price system relies on individuals to make choices. This is called consumer sovereignty, where the buyers decide what products and services they want. If they don't want certain goods, then less will be sold, and therefore less produced by businesses. Resources go into making things that people can afford to buy, not based on need. Or we can look at the other extreme, the centrally planned system. In this case, the government, the state, makes all the decisions. The government decides how much and for whom the, the goods and services are produced. Then lastly, we have the mixed market model, where we have the mixture of both extremes, where decisions are made both by consumers and by government intervention. All countries can be classified into a continuum of planned socialism to plan market capitalism. On the left hand side, you've got planned socialism where the, de the decisions are mainly made by governments. On the opposite extreme are cap market capitalism, market forces and private enterprises make all the decisions there. Let's look at from the left hand side. You've got North Korea which today is the most centrally planned or most socialist economy today. Cuba is also still a centrally planned economy and then we're moving on to China, which has still got, is politically um, got centrally planned, but they've allowed a lot of market style economies to, to, to allow decisions to be made by private individuals. 
Now moving to from the centre to further towards the right, we've got Russia. Um, Australia is even further right. And um, lastly, we've got the United States, which has got a less, uh, less amount of government intervention. So the, the further right you go, you've got less government intervention, and the further left, you've got more. You could argue that Australia has, has moved towards the right over the past 25 years, evidenced by increased privatisation, which means selling of government businesses like Telstra and Qantas, freer trade through reductions of tariffs and deregulation. You could also argue that the current Labor government has imposed more regulations since their term of office, meaning that Australia has moved a little bit towards the, the centre, a little bit left of where I currently had it on the continuum. Now let's look at the features of market economies or mixed market economies. First of all they have a market system, a network of buyers and sellers wanting to buy and sell products and services. And this is evidenced by the product markets that the consumers buy. Buyers are the consumers that demand goods and services. Buyers want the lowest possible price and the producers want the highest possible price. And this is evidenced by the price mechanism. It's the process by which forces of supply by producers and demand by consumers interact to determine the market price of goods and services that are sold and what quantity is sold. We have factor markets and they are the resource markets in another word where the factors of production are used as inputs in the production process. The price mechanism also influences the way resources are allocated in the economy. Another feature which has already been mentioned is private ownership of property. People have the right to own property which, is, which are the means of production. Individuals do this by, to, to gain income and to acquire wealth. Common ways of ownership are land, property and shares in the share market. They have the right, and, the right to buy and sell their property, shares etc. to whoever they choose. Another feature is this issue of consumer sovereignty. Consumers are free to choose what they buy. Producers produce the goods and services that consumers want. If consumers don't want certain goods and then the price will fall and the producers will allocate resources to other areas of production to produce items that consumers want and obviously they're obvious they're going to make a profit. In our mixed market economies we have the freedom of enterprise. Individuals have the right to use their resources they choose. This means entrepreneurs are free to set up enterprises in the pursuit of making a profit. In these market systems we also operate under competition. Competition means a larger number of buyers and sellers. If there are enough buyers and sellers they will compete with one another to produce goods and services more efficiently to gain competitive advantages. This will reduce prices accordingly. In less competitive markets, larger businesses make profits um, at the expense of consumers and one notable thing there is a monopoly, which is a very inefficient market form. In a mixed market economy, there is a role for government. Governments intervene in the market because the free market does not always allow the most efficient allocation of resources. They provide essential goods and services not provided by the private sector. Some necessary goods and services may not be provided under a pure market system, for example parks, um, railways, education. For example, railways have to be operated and owned by the government because no private enterprise will be willing to provide such a huge amount of capital to build them. The private sector would, would not provide collective goods like parks, roads and national defence. Some services like defence are safer and more stable for governments to provide. Governments provide regulation to prevent producers from exploiting consumers or to provide illicit goods. Another important part of government involvement is the distribution of income. A free market will not provide a socially desirable or fair distribution. 
in Australia we live in in an egalitarian society where we give everybody a fair go so this leads us to the provision of welfare payments people who cannot earn an income or do not contribute to the production process will be provided for by the government in forms of pensions unemployment benefits and other social security payments as well as having a fair and equitable system we have a thing called a progressive tax system the higher the income you earn the more tax or rate of tax you pay this is called a progressive tax system the government aims to reduce redistribute income to achieve a more equitable or even sharing by requiring high income earners to pay proportionally more higher levels of tax than low income earners now let's look at a progressive tax scale system namely the Australian income tax system you'll notice here that if you earn less than eighteen thousand two hundred dollars you don't have to pay any tax so any dollar over eighteen thousand two hundred one dollar dollars up to thirty seven thousand you have to pay nineteen cents in a dollar and so on so over thirty seven thousand um, you pay that much tax plus thirty two and a half cents for every dollar over that okay so you can see up here I've calculated the amount on twenty five thousand so the first twenty five thousand dollars you earn you have to pay a total tax of one thousand two hundred and twenty two now if I change that to say fifty thousand dollars and uh, do the calculation on that you notice after a bit of a, a lag here that we have to pay eight thousand two hundred and ninety seven dollars Right. so what would have happened is that the way that would have been calculated they would have said okay um, they would have taken the first thirty seven thousand dollars and that would have been three thousand five hundred and seventy two dollars the remaining which is th uh, thirteen thousand dollars at thirty two and a half cents so that's why the first um, twenty five thousand dollars that you earned only you paid twelve hundred dollars odd um, as you go up progressively into tax scale you pay more as you can see it's over seven thousand dollars extra for the next twenty five thousand dollars income and as you keep going up you'll see that if you go above hundred eighty thousand I can only wish um, I would then pay forty five cents for every dollar earned over that amount now governments try to smooth out the extremes of the business cycle to address issues of inflation and unemployment to provide economic stability governments also intervene when there's major financial problems such as when all the credit crisis brought the financial system close to collapse in 2007 quite often the government is accused of being inefficient in the way it allocates its resources to allow waste to occur examples of this are the stimulus payments after the global financial crisis the pink bats program and arguably the spending on the education revolution and laptops for schools this area opens up the, the debate how much intervention or how much interference is there by governments this issue is hotly debated what role should governments play in a market economy people who want less government involvement in, and intervention will say things like bureaucratic interference choked by red tape and socialism people who want more government intervention say things like give people a fair go we want decent minimum standards basic rights and protect people from dog eat dog mentality of unchecked market forces we can summarize this issue by looking at the diagram of what contributes to a mixed market economy two main influences that make up the mix in the Australian economy depends on the amount of market forces and the amount of government intervention let's look at some of the market forces competition the amount of competition in the economy is paramount for firms to compete to allocate resources more efficiently less competition may lead to monopolies which presents an inefficient allocation this is a feature in the Australian economy in some sectors for example communications next one is consumer sovereignty free enterprise 
allowing free enterprise to allow individuals to take risks to make profit by offering a good or service. Private property. Individuals are allowed to earn to own private property. Now let's look at the other side. Government intervention is evidenced by a progressive income taxation system. It's designed to tax high income earners to redistribute income to low income earners by way of subsidies, rebates and pensions. Social welfare payments. Pensioners, unemployment benefits, youth allowance payments, family payments, disability pensions are just a few examples of how governments assist people who are in need whose needs are not met by market forces. A system of regulation to regulate the conduct of businesses, individuals, governments and countries for that matter. And the amount of public ownership of government assets and businesses. For example, Australian Post is a government owned enterprise. Telstra and Qantas used to be owned by the government who privatised both businesses to transfer ownership from the public sector to the private sector. That's it for your presentation on economic systems. Hopefully you'll be ready now to do some consolidation exercises and to be able to answer some questions that Mr Meyer no doubt will pass your way. Thank you for listening.